Alright, so I had a request here to talk about something. And it's from William Latham. He asked, could you go over Revelation 3.10? I was listening to a guy say that no one is taking his blessed hope and referenced Revelation 3.10 as proof that God will keep us out of the great tribulation. This verse has me wondering exactly what is the hour of temptation. All right, so let's go over this because it's interesting. Uh, in my opinion, it's very interesting. So if we go to Revelation 3. Oh, I had it right there. Okay, so um, let's read the particular verse first. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. All right. So, first of all, uh, what I would like, to, what I like to do, the way I go about something like this, go our temptation. Let's just do it that way. Our tempt. And we see that the only time this phrase is mentioned is here in Revelation 3, verse 10. Now, you, and when you have a situation like this, you have to have other verses to support it in order for you to have a sound doctrine regarding that particular issue. All right, in this case, this particular phrase. So, what is it talking about when it says the hour of temptation all right and so the well the way I go about it is uh, sort of like uh, you know a process of elimination if you will there's the old saying that um, you know once you've eliminated all the possibilities whatever is left however improbable must be the truth and I don't I think that's uh, theoretically true, but it's not absolutely true. All right, I don't want to get into that too much, but and simply we're going to try to eliminate everything and and conclude what must be true. So this it says I will uh, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. So it's going to keep thee from this time period if you will all right so let's take a look at the future so in the future in the world to come there's coming a time when there is no more sorrow no more crying no more tears no more death, no more pain. All those things are going to be done away with. All right, so we can conclude without any doubt that this is not talking about the time after this world is completely finished and over with, you know. Uh, so it's not going to be in the world to come. Now, we have to also conclude that this is not something in the past, in the Old Testament. It wasn't before the flood. It wasn't before the birth of baby Jesus. And it wasn't uh, presently spoken. All right, so it has to be from sometime after that's written to sometime at the end of the world all right so and if that makes sense i hope that makes sense so we have to we, we can narrow it down to a to is it happening now well it can't be happening now because um it it, it doesn't it wouldn't make any sense uh well, I think let's 
first of all, let's read the context. What is the total context of this message? All right. So if you see here down in 14, and unto the angel of the church of Laodiceans, I can't say words, so forgive me on that. So this is a message to that church here, but we go up here and we see the message to the church of Philadelphia. And to the church of Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that has the key of David, he that opens, and no man shuts, and shuts, and no man opens. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews, and are not, but do lie, behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee, because thou hast kept my word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcomes will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. All right, so this is great stuff. Now, um, first of all, the way I see this in the context, he's saying, look, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. This can only be at the end of the world. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, you know, I've gone over this before, but... It doesn't hurt to go over it over again and again. All right, so we read about this. First, the dead in Christ. Then those of us which are alive and remain are lifted up. to be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air so shall we ever be with the Lord <clears throat> alright so this is what happens at the end of the world alright when we are lifted up the enemy is at our feet right and so that's what is meant here in Revelation 3 I will make them to come and worship before thy feet all right that is at the end of the world and this goes all the way back to Genesis 3 I will put enmity between thee and thy seed or I'm sorry and I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel all right that happens at the end of the world till i make thine enemies thy footstool right we see this uh it, a number of times so it's actually in the old testament as well if we could go uh, until I make thine enemies thy footstool, and so on and so forth. Sit thou at, on my right hand, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. So this is all, consistent all throughout the Bible. That we will be lifted up, we that are saved are lifted up to be with the Lord, and then our enemies gathered at our feet, and devoured forever. Okay. So knowing that, and understanding that, when we read verse 10... Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, 
to try them that dwell upon the earth. So I will keep thee from that moment. All right, so what that means is judgment day, when it comes, you will be lifted up. You that are born of God will be lifted up and therefore the hour of temptation is that moment when first the dead in Christ rise you know at the last trump for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So, this hour of temptation, I will keep thee from the hour of temptation. So, that's the moment. And then we could go to Revelation 20 and make another and connect another dot. So, when Satan is loosed at the end of the thousand years, so this is the same time period. <clears throat> okay, he's going to go out and gather together the unsaved he's going to deceive the nations this is the hour of temptation he's going to deceive them and gather them together at our feet and fire is going to come down from heaven and devour them all that's the hour of temptation I will keep thee by lifting you up in the air to be with the Lord and you and the enemies will be gathered at our feet that's the hour of temptation there cannot be any other possibility so we've eliminated all other possibilities and we've come to fully understand exactly what it means when it says I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation all right hopefully that helps and I appreciate the comment and the question if you have follow-ups please let's continue that discussion but again, I just want to reiterate, this is not rocket science. This is very simple. All you have to do is believe, have faith, believe the Bible that you hold in your hands is from God. That's the key. That's number one. Without that, it's going to be impossible to understand anything. But I, you know, I have a pretty good, pretty strong feeling that William Latham absolutely believes in the Word of God. And that's a great question, great comment, and I, I appreciate that request right there.